गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू दी वीकेंड लाइव वीकेंड पे करेंगे कॉल रेड रूल नंबर एटीन इन डिस्कशन विद यू गाइज एंड आई थिंक दिस वॉज वन रूल विच वॉज मच अवेटेड सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर एड यू हाउ हाउ इज एवरी वन एंड आई होप यू गाइज आर डूइंग एब्सोल्यूटली फाइन एंड हैविंग गुड फन विद ऑन सेट ऑफ वीकेंड फ्राइडे आई होप good night okay okay good night good night and good bye so welcome to the live i'm extremely sorry the live has started pretty much late it's 12:30 here rather early morning in hong kong it's fine earlier i was planning to start the live say like around uh, around 10 o'clock here but had few urgent commitments that said hafte ka ek live to banta hai i think i am allowed to have my guilty pleasure to talk to you guys and have some bit of fun interact and you know move away rather with some better energy so welcome everyone to the live today and i hope you guys are doing absolutely fine chalo to live chalu karte hain the live the live today how is working life in hong kong life has been good it's been busy i think busy is an understatement but the thing is if you are enjoying the kind of work you are engaged into it's not work so whatever amount of time it occupies it doesn't bother me much because i sort of enjoy the whole participation and being part of the team so that's been my thought process behind the kind of work we are engaged in dekhna acha thanks a lot for all your live and lovely warm and lovely comments we'll have a conti- we'll we'll have a good interactive live we'll have one on one questions we'll have some good fun stories like which are more like our weekend stories are goods and bads you know some good experience some funny experience we are going to come to that but before that we need to wrap up for which i have started the live and then we can continue with the fun part of the live which happens to be more of like one on one discussion with you guys <coughs> so let us come back to the topic and if you guys allow me to read oh, what i'm trying to share with you guys and then i can come back to you and take your questions the live is about rule number 18 responsibilities between the vessels but you are free to ask me anything regarding colrex if i know it i'll be able to answer you uh, sir aap कभी भी लाइव आते हो तो कुछ इम्पोर्टेंट डिटेल्स ही देते हो या थैंक्स थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर दैट एंड सो कमिंग बैक टू द लाइव द लाइव पार्ट ऑफ इट रूल नंबर एटीन इज रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज बिटवीन वेसल इट्स अ वेरी स्मॉल रूल वेरी इजी रूल प्रोवाइडेड यू पे अटेंशन टू द फर्स्ट लाइन विच इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन वाई आई से इट्स मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टेक्निकली आई शुड नॉट बी सेंग इट बट वाई आई से इट बिकॉज इट्स द बेस ऑफ द रूल इट सेट्स द थीम फॉर द एंटायर रूल नाउ घर में रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज होती है ठीक है कि भाई घर में आप ये संभालेंगे आप वो संभालेंगे ऑफिस में देर आर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज यू नो के दिस पर्सन इज गोइंग टू हैंडल दिस डिपार्टमेंट दिस पर्सन इज गोइंग टू हैंडल द अकाउंट दिस पर्सन इज गोइंग टू हैंडल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दिस पर्सन इज गोइंग टू हैंडल कमर्शियल अफेयर्स सो एन एंड सो फोर्थ सो रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज हैव टू बी डिफाइंड इन एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ एंगेजमेंट यू नो इवन इन एन अफेयर उसमें भी आप एक रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज डिसाइड कर लेते भाई ठीक है आज you will end up picking me up and then you know perhaps you know next time i'll pick you up from here and so, so on and so forth or you end up planning a vacation i'll end up booking the hotels you end up paying for the flight so on and so forth so there is always whenever parties uh, hi hi merchant navy underscore 24 welcome to the live so whenever we are we have interaction of one two parties or more or different parties we need some sort of engagement rules and that is what exactly rule number 18 is all about it's about defining responsibilities life ki responsibilities ko decide karna bahut bahut zaruri hai mere dosto to rule 18 is very very simple but you need to be very careful when you read the rules like i always stress and i always repeat that never ever ever make the mistake of gauging through a rule always try and read the rule in totality word by word otherwise you'll end up misinterpreting the rule or even worse not understanding at all and in rules of the road lack of understanding is better than poor understanding because you can end up like you know perhaps you know making a disaster out of it if i can say it 
coming back to the rule part, let's start and see what the text says. And then we can take your complicated questions. What if, if I have an NUC versus an NUC, if I have a RAM versus NUC, everything will be answered. So let's start. Except where rule 9, 10 and 13 otherwise require. What does this mean? This means agar rule 9, 10, 13 mein kuch alag se likha hai. So that is going to supersede what is written here. Except rule 9, 10 and 13 otherwise requires. So 9, 10, 13 mein kya hai? 13 means overtaking and 13 says a vessel. A vessel. So in case a vessel is trying to overtake you, in that situation rule number 18 will not be applicable. It's not applicable. 13 will supersede. Likewise, rule number 9, 9 and 10. What does rule 9 and 10 specifically talks about? It talks about primarily three or four kind of vessels. We are, we are, we are talking about rule number. Uh, we are talking about a vessel less than 20 meters in length. We are talking about a sailing vessel. We are, we are talking about primarily about a ram vessel who's engaged in, you know, laying picking or servicing of, uh, you know, something uh, which is related to the navigation or laying picking servicing of submarine cables. So ram and fishing vessel. So sailing vessel, fishing vessel, ram vessel in case of rule 10, which is up and additional and vessel less than 20 meters. So rule 9, 10 and 13, they talk rule 9 and 10 specifically talks, you know, they, they have few additional requirements or, you know, a sort of engagement rules in case you are having an interaction with ram, fishing, sailing vessels. So if 9 and 10 talks or mentions something otherwise, which is mentioned in these rules, that means in case you are you are in narrow channel in case you are in TSS, then whatever is written in nine and 10 with regards to engaging with a fishing vessel, sailing vessel or ram vessel that is going to supersede what is written in rule number 18. Primarily, primarily as if you are a power driven vessel, you are anyways going to keep clear of a ram vessel. So what is specifically written with regards to ram vessel vis-a-vis -vis to a power driven vessel is not going to make much of a difference, but engaging with a vessel less than 20 meters, engaging with with a fishing vessel or a sailing vessel is going to be a total different ball game altogether. So that's why pay attention. So except where rule 9, 10 and 13, 13 is overtaking. So if somebody is going to overtake you, the primary responsibility of staying clear from the vessels lies on the vessel, which is overtaking you until she's passed and clear of you. Coming back, party, if you're a power driven vessel, most of us come from a background of a power driven vessel primarily. So if you are a power driven vessel underway in any area except where 9, 10 applies, that means a narrow channel and TSS. So primarily if you are in coastal waters or open sea, maneuvering anywhere except narrow channel and TSS. And if you are not engaged in an overtaking situation, rule number 18 will be applicable to you. Okay. If I can make it a little more simple. Okay. So if you are a power driven vessel, underway. You shall keep out of the way of power driven vessel. Yaad rakhna dosto. He's like Thakur. Bohat majboor hota hai ho. Thik hai na? Especially if engaging out at open sea. So a power driven vessel is a Thakur. Bohat majboor rahega ho. Kyu majboor rahega? Kyunki usse primarily more or less sab ke liye hi rasta chhodna padega. Why? Let's see. A power driven vessel underway shall keep out of the way of vessel not under command. Makes sense. Thik hai bhai. Power not under command to matlab raja. Vessel restricted in ability to maneuver well, nine rule number 10 wants you to keep out of the way of ram anyways. So it doesn't make much of a difference and vessel engaged in fishing and sailing vessel. So a power driven vessel is going to keep out of the way of NUC ram fishing vessel and sailing vessel, except where nine and 10 and 13 else otherwise requires. That means if a fishing vessel is not overtaking you, you are going to keep clear. If you meet a fishing vessel in TSS, then you are going to keep clear. If you are not meet, meeting a fishing vessel in narrow channel, depending on what kind of a situation it is, you are going to keep clear. So basically, if you are not in a narrow channel and if you are not in a TSS and if you are not engaged in us in a crossing, uh, in a, in a overtaking situation, you as a power driven vessel are going to keep clear of ram, NUC, fishing vessel and sailing vessel. That means pretty much everybody. Why? Kuch bhi dikhta hai, open sea mein, you have to keep clear. Basically, that's what the rule says. Tu power driven vessel hai, side ja. Now coming to next category of vessel, sailing vessel. I don't think so. Humme se koi bhi sailing vessel background se hoga ya, but nonetheless, let's see. You don't think. Let's see. Power driven vessel. Uh, we have already discussed. Now let's see sailing vessel. 
my siri got activated and bloody it scared the shit out of me oof thank god i'm still alone in the room <laughs> oof my heart skipped a beat for a moment and i got damn scared funny shut up so coming to sailing vessels underway they should keep out of the way of not under command ram vessel and vessel engaged in fishing remember rule 9 and 10 also specifically talks about fishing vessel and especially tss says it should not bother any vessel impede the passage of any vessel following a traffic separation lane in the general direction of traffic flow so basically in that case if a sailing vessel meets a fishing vessel she is not supposed to keep clear but like i said anywhere where if you are not in tss if you are not in a uh, uh, narrow channel if you are, if you are not engaged in a overtaking situation 18 will take precedence 18 will apply so basically sailing vessel is going to take will stay and the easiest way to remember is as you keep coming down number of vessels starts to reduce so power driven vessel supposed to stay clear of ram and you see sailing vessel fishing vessel sailing vessel is supposed to keep clear of ram and you see and fishing vessel fishing vessel is only supposed to keep clear of ram vessel and and you see vessel so as a jaise aap descending order mein aaoge ऑप्शन उस हिसाब से कम होते चले जाएंगे सो द वन हुज मिसिंग फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन इज गोइंग टू स्टे क्लियर ऑफ ऑल अदर्स सो पावर ड्रिवन वेसल मिसिंग फ्रॉम द एक्शन पावर ड्रिवन मिसिंग फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन पावर ड्रिवन वेसल मिसिंग फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन दैट मीन्स इट स्टेज क्लियर ऑफ रैम एंड यू सी सेलिंग फिशिंग सेलिंग मिसिंग फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन स्टेज क्लियर ऑफ फिशिंग स्टेज क्लियर ऑफ रैम स्टेज क्लियर ऑफ एन यू सी इजी वे टू नोवेंबर इफ यू आर अ फिशिंग वेसल मिसिंग फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन यू स्टे क्लियर ऑफ रैम You stay clear of NUC. So fishing vessel को से दो ही लोगों से डरना है. Until it's not engaged in as per rule nine, ten, and thirteen, then ram and NUC. Now coming to the interesting bit. Any vessel other than not under command or a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver shall, if the circumstances of case admit, shall if the circumstances of case admit, avoid impeding the safe passage of a vessel constrained by her draft exhibiting the signals of rule eighteen. What is the signal of Rule 18? Three all-round red lights, yeah, cylinder during the daylight, during the day. So that's a day signal. So basically, constrained by draft has to stay clear of ram and NUC, and everyone else, so far as possible, should avoid impeding the safe passage. Safe passage means, again, like I'll give you the example of a Singapore Channel, Singapore Strait. Singapore Strait, you have got deep water routes. If you are a vessel more than fifteen meters in draft, then by the local regulation, you are required to stay within the deep water routes. And also at times, may, you may not even have draft outside that deep water routes. So in that case, that deep water route becomes your safe passage. So, in those circumstances, all other vessels except for ram and and you see are supposed to stay clear of you. Okay, but remember, constrained by draft, only two vessels are not supposed to. be you know bothering primarily just to keep it simple ram and nuc except that everybody else is supposed to stay clear of constrained by draft but remember guys constrained by draft by the basic definition is a power driven vessel so power driven vessel raja ban sakta hai provided wo constrained by draft aur agar wo constrained by draft hai to wo trup ka ikka hai because other than nuc and rm everybody is supposed to keep clear okay अब क्या आगे बोलता है कई बार हम लोग एट टाइम्स वी आर कंफ्यूज दैट इफ आई एम अ कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट एंड यू नो समबडी कम्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी व्हाट एक्शन कैन आई टेक शी इज सपोज टू कीप क्लियर देन फॉलो द रूल डी पार्ट टू अ कंस्टेंट अ वेसल कंस्टेंट बाय हर ड्राफ्ट शेल नेविगेट विद पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन हैविंग फुल रिगार्ड टू अ स्पेशल कंडीशन व्हाट डज इट मीन अ वेसल कंस्टेंट बाय हर ड्राफ्ट शेल नेविगेट विद पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन हैविंग रिगार्ड्स टू हर स्पेशल कंडीशन दैट मींस इफ यू आर अ कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट एंड यू नो दैट यू कैन नॉट लीव अ सर्टेन जोन और अ गिवन पाथ देन यू मस्ट नेवी यू मस्ट कीप दैट इन माइंड यू कैन नॉट से दैट ओके आई एम अ कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट आई विल गो अहेड यू नो कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट बट येट आई विल गो अहेड यू नो मेकिंग फुल स्पीड बिकॉज़ अदर्स आर स्टे क्लियर यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दैट यू आर कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट यू डू नॉट हैव द लग्जरी of sea room maybe because you are restricted within that passage but you must be careful about it and what do we mean by being careful about it we mean that 
you should be you should be maneuvering at safe speed first of all or perhaps even a speed which is well adapted to that circumstances and that circumstances means that your lack of serum going left and right is is a problem for you that also means that you must be able to maneuver your engines you must be able to reduce speed and further if it if the situation so deemed requires if the situation warrants you to reduce speed you should be able to reduce speed so basically what it means is that you if you are a constrained by draft vessel you should navigate with particular caution having full regard so you must regard that your situation of being constrained by draft requires additional precautions as you may not be able to alter by large margin then you must have some sort of other action plan of action ready to in, that in case you have to avoid risk of collision you should be able to avoid to do that you should be able to do that how you can do that well first of all having your engines ready you know maneuver with your engines ready whether you want to move ahead or full ahead or half ahead that depends totally subjective to where exactly you are maneuvering kind of traffic situation etc etc so have the due regard of your situation okay safe speed look out good practice of seamanship keeping the engines ready etc that doesn't mean because i am a constrained by draft signal lagaya full ahead and rfa leke bhagte hue ja rahe that's not the case so you are supposed to keep that in mind last bit a sea plane on the water a sea plane on the water in general keep clear of all vessels and avoid impeding their navigation in circum in circumstances however where risk of collision exists she shall comply with the rule of this part so a sea plane basically is going to keep clear of everybody whatsoever when she is on water so a sea plane on water shall in general keep clear of all vessels and avoid impeding their navigation in if in circumstances however where risk of collision exists she shall comply with the rules of this part what is the rule of this part that she is not supposed to impede the vessel because sea plane end of the day is also under the category of power driven vessel so basically if, even in case she is encountering a other power driven vessel she is supposed to keep clear so to keep things in, simple sea plane is supposed to keep clear of pretty much everyone everyone now coming to the last part part f a wing in ground craft when taking off landing or in flight near the surface shall keep clear of all other vessels and avoid impeding their navigation so even a wig is going to keep clear of everyone pretty much a wing in ground craft operating on the water surface shall comply with the rules of this part as a power driven vessel but a wing in ground which is not taking off or which is not landing or in flight near the surface of water uske liye rule change ho jata hai thoda sa kaise change ho jata hai rule f part 1 says that if you are a wing in ground taking off landing or flying in the near the surface of water then you are supposed to keep clear of all the vessels however if you are a wing in ground operating on the water surface you should comply with the rules of this part as a power driven vessel that means a wing in ground has to comply with the responsibilities of a power driven vessel in case she is operating on the surface of the water not in the proximity of surface if she is operating on the surface of water then she is supposed to she is supposed to act like a power driven vessel and the responsibilities of power driven vessel should be assumed by wing and ground and what is the responsibility of uh, power driven vessel well stay clear of any you see ram fishing vessel and sailing vessel so with that we come to the end of this very quick small precise life rule 18 responsibility between the vessels and your only question is going to be in case of ram versus nuc what are you going to do well first of all it all depends what kind of an nuc situation it is like what kind of a situation are you through if you are an nuc it can be very well a situation where you have a rudder stuck you know you may not be able to alter course or maybe you are having a fire on board and you are trying to fight that fire but you you might have the option of maybe altering 5 10 degrees because your steering gear is still working totally depends so we cannot say that what happens if an nuc meets an ram but if a if a ram meets an nuc first of all both are obliged to take action because both are in a way exempted from complying with these rules but there are slight bit of difference the way they can go about not complying with these rules within the definition of the vessels itself now let's see how so so first thing is that if it is a if it is a situation of ram versus nuc there is not a clear answer that a ram is going to stay clear of nuc or a nuc is going to stay clear of ram because you cannot see that clearly given in the responsibility but by interpreting their definition as it is given in rule 3 and applying your 
like i said like there is a word of good practice of seamanship both are obliged in a way of whatever they can do to resolve the situation or to at least avoid risk of collision for that we need to go and interrogate what is the definition exactly says let's read the definition of first not under command pay attention very important the term vessel not under command means a vessel which through some exceptional circumstances is unable to maneuver now remember the key word here is unable to maneuver as required by these rules and therefore unable to keep out of the way of another vessel the vessel because of her exceptional circumstances is unable she is unable to maneuver as required by these rules so she is not able to maneuver as required by these rules and therefore unable to keep out of the way of other so two keywords two 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 sentences that first of all she is not she is not able to keep out of the way of other vessel and she is not able to maneuver as required by these rules so it is quite possible that she may not be able to keep out of your way so there is no option of asking that can any uc be taking any action she can she may but who knows what kind of a situation it is on board but we all we can assume is that she is through some exceptional circumstances and she is not going to maneuver as required by these rules now let's see what ram means by the definition and see how it differs slightly and slightly from you know nuc in terms of how she is exempted from the rules the term vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver means a vessel which from the nature of her work apne kaam ki nature ki wajah se it can be a diving vessel imagine you have five ten divers who are working so you cannot maneuver the vessel you know the risk of life which from the nature of work is restricted in our ability to maneuver as required by these rules now see the difference when it when we talk about not under command it says it's unable to maneuver as required by these rules whereas in in restricted a uh, ram vessels case it says is restricted in our ability it doesn't say unable to maneuver as required by these rules it says is restricted in our ability to as required by to maneuver as required by so rest, the word is there the word is unable to maneuver here the word is restricted to maneuver do you see the difference so in a way if at all we have to dissect it and you see still have a more still have more leverage as compared to ram because the definition says unable to maneuver as required by these rules she is unable to maneuver as required by these rules and therefore unable to keep out of the the way of other vessels so uh, and you see is unable to maneuver as required by these rules whereas a ram is restricted to maneuver as required by these rules she is restricted to maneuver as required by these rules so you see the slight difference between the two unable to maneuver as required by these rules matlab wo in rules ke hisab se maneuver hi nahi kar sakta and dusri cheez is restricted means uske upar kuch restrictions hain but kuch kar sakta hai she is maneuver as required by these rules okay so that's the difference if you if if you dissect the definition so nuc is unable to maneuver as required by these rules and restricted in ability to maneuver is restricted in her ability to maneuver as required by these rules so if at all i have to bisect i'll say 0.1% extra responsibility on a ram vessel but again depending what kind of a ram vessel she is what kind of a engagement she is involved in what kind of an nuc are you because if you go legally it is not just going to be okay you are an nuc you are in ram you, you are supposed to both take action the owner it is again going to be bise- dissected into the fact that what kind of a ram operations you were involved in what kind of an nuc you were what kind of a situation you had what kind of a maneuvering capability whether you had the option of uh, uh you know perhaps maybe altering your course or maybe reducing the speed it all depends so it's never as simple when we say what is going to happen if there is a ram versus nuc but if we dissect the definition we get a small clue that ram is restricted in is is restricted in her ability to as maneuver as as required to maneuver by these rules and whereas in, in case of a and you see it says unable to maneuver as required by these rules so i hope i am able to explain you this rule rule 18 in case you have any questions feel free to throw the questions sir can a sailor and change his fleet of ships please tell it out from 3 2 to 3 months 
that is going to be in a different light. If in case you have anything pertaining to rule number 18 or anything re related to call regs, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we'll wrap up this live and we'll restart the live with a different agenda, which is going to be more easy. Am I audible guys? In case I'm audible, just give me a thumbs up. I hope I'm still audible. I hope I, I am still audible guys. If I'm audible, just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, audible. So in case you got a call in between so screen freeze sorry guys i got a call in between sorry the screen got completely frozen so again there was a question what <laughs> that in case there is a situation of RAM versus NUC who is going to stay clear. I think I've just answered this question uh, that both will have the uh, uh, onus of keeping clear. There is you cannot say one vessel has the onus, but if at all you have to bisect the rule, remember the keywords is the keywords are that RAM is unable to maneuver as required by these rules. Whereas in uh, the RAM is restricted in their ability to maneuver as required by these rules and NUC is unable to maneuver as required by these rules. So maybe 0.1% of extra responsibility on a RAM, but again, subjected to what kind of an NUC are you and what kind of a RAM are you interacting with? So there is no clear answer, but if at all you have to say, I would say that the onus of responsibility, both are obliged to take action, action because rule number 18 does not state what happens in case there is a RAM versus NUC situation. You cannot define that. It all depends what kind of a RAM you are going to interact with being an NUC and depending what kind of an NUC, what makes you an NUC. Okay. So that's the answer for RAM versus NUC. Both are obliged to take action as in best of their capability, whatever the best they can do. Okay. Being an NUC. So if you're an NUC making 15 knots, why are you making 15 knots? You're supposed to stop your engines if you're running through some exceptional circumstances. So if you're an NUC, more often than not, you will see the vessel not proceeding at full speed. She will be either be drifting or she will be maneuvering at very slow speeds. And unless the NUC situation has just taken place and the vessel starts to lose speed. Okay. So in that, until unless that is the case, or in case, you know, you're maneuvering and your rudder gets stuck, you are at full C speed. So again, the first uh, in, uh, you know, your action will be to reduce the speed and immediately stop the vessel depending, you know, and perhaps, you know, look for an anchorage depending where exactly you are. But your idea uh, the moment you have a situation where you run into an NUC is to stop the vessel, you know, or to keep her at minimum, minimum, minimum steerage way. So the answer is little more complicated and requires a little more in-depth interrogation in a real life world. So that's my answer. So I hope that's that, that pretty, pretty much answers the question. Okay. Yes. CBD and NUC is head on situation. Which rule will be applied? What would be the course of action? The rule says it all, my dear friend. How can you put up? How can the rule says it all? Yes. I clearly read out the rule. It says any vessel other than not under command or a vessel restricted in our ability to maneuver shall, if the circumstances of case admit, avoid impeding the, uh, uh, safe passage of a vessel. 
constrained by a draft. So if you have an NUC and you are a constrained by draft, you are going to take clear. You are just constrained by draft. That doesn't mean you don't have your engines to maneuver. That doesn't mean you cannot alter even by two degrees or five degrees. That totally depends what kind of a sea room you have, but you still have your engines all the time. Nobody stops you from reducing the speed. And remember guys, I'm telling you again, the head on situation is not a situation which you can say a head on situation rule 14 is only applicable between two power driven vessels. So if, if the other vessel is not a power driven vessel and you're meeting that vessel head on, you have an option of going port or starboard both. So rule, when you say head on, please understand what do you imply by it? Are you just trying to describe a situation or you are trying to say rule 14 head on rule 14 head on situation is only applicable when two power driven vessels are meeting on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses. So if you are, if you have an NUC in a head on situation coming on a reciprocal course, rather you can go port or starboard both, or you can reduce the speed. And if she's coming dead on, well, you still have to alter rather than colliding. You might as well run aground depending where exactly you are going to run aground. If you are hell bent on the fact that I've got no room to maneuver and the NUC is moving towards me, what can you do? You can just reduce speed, but redu reducing the speed will not change the, you know, angle of attack. So if you are putting me in a situation ke saamne hai, main alter hi kar sakta na, ek degree dhar na, ek degree dhar, which can never be the case. Which can never be the case. Uske liye aapke jahaz ko bilkul phaske chalna hoga is channel mein. To waisa to hoga nahi. So you will always have luxury of some alteration, you know, maybe two degrees, three degrees, and you will always have enough room to alter and or reduce speed both to avoid a NUC. But NUC ke case mein, if you are a CVD, you have to keep clear. The rule clearly states that. So yes, uh, question answer ho gaya. Any other question guys and some guys telling action use fender and if shallow batch try and anchor this type of answer. Okay. For this NUC and ram head on to survey. No, you cannot say that you cannot say that that you can anchor. It depends whether you are maneuvering at anchoring speed or not. So you, you, you so you cannot say that uh, uh, the answer to this question is go and anchor that depends. Do I am I in anchoring depths? How far am I from shore? So you cannot say that the answer is the first of all, the question is why are you maneuvering at such high speeds? If you, if you are an NUC, you should be maneuvering at minimum steerage way possible because I'm assuming that you are not able to alter. And if I have to assume that you can alter, then why are you not altering? So either ways, or maybe there is nobody on the bridge. So henceforth you are maneuvering at full speed and nobody is there to alter the course. That can be the case, but that is not something which Ram is aware about. And maybe he's having 10 divers down. He cannot afford to move. What, what are you going to do then? So you cannot say your action is you're assuming is that that is like, what, what if there is a fire on the bridge? So again, you can say that, you know, what if there is simultaneous, okay, I can make it more complicated. What there is simultaneous fire on the, in the control room. And there is also an ex explosion on the bridge. What if it's a terrorist situation? You know, they have taken the hostages and they switch on the NUC light and they're not allowing you to either stop the engine or to alter course. And they want you to proceed towards the RM. So what are you going to do as an RM? And you have 10 divers down. Are you going to kill those 10 divers? No safety of life will take precedence. You will still allow the collision because in case of collision, the safety of the, the, the damage to a property will take place with chances of probable loss, but not confirmed loss. But if you have 10 divers working on your propeller, if you move the propeller, they are dead. So NUC versus RM is a very subjective thing and you cannot say certainly, yeah, maybe in an exam room drama where you are given certain cues, the sur if the surveyor mm -hmm. is giving you a certain cues that, okay, you are mm -hmm. close to an anchorage, you have a mm -hmm. chance of uh, being in an anchorage, close to an anchorage, blah, blah, blah. In only in that case, you can consider to anchor and give this kind of an answer. You can, you can do that. But the idea of an examination room, but he will give you certain cues with which you can make out that you can follow the tra trajectory of giving him that you are going to proceed to an anchorage. But again, it depends on the anchorage. What if the anchorage is congested and rather than hitting one ship, you end up hitting 10 more in a Singapore anchorage. If you alter and enter that anchorage as an NUC, you will not try and barge into an anchorage, but you will try and anchor as close as possible to anchoring depths as available and best possible. So thanks a lot, uh, Devansh Verma. Thanks a lot for your best wishes. So I think with that, we can wrap up the live today. Uh, I think pretty much all the questions have been answered. Okay, sir, can you give me some of your questions? Sponsor, sir, yes, CBC, head on. 
ओके वॉट रूल विल बी अपलीगल आई थिंक यश का यश का क्वेश्चन हो गया एंड रेस्ट एवरी थिंग इज जेनरिक मर्च एंड नीवी डाउट्स विच आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक एज ऑफ नाउ इन दिस लाइफ लास्ट वन मिनट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन अदरवाइज आई रैप अपर द लाइफ टूडे एंड आई री स्टार्ट द लाइफ टू टेक जेनेरिक क्वेश्चन या Are you in a shop or on a trip? I'm in my room. Okay, I think no more questions. आज आप लोगों के पास कोई आर ओ आर से रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन नहीं है सो विद दोस्ट थॉट विल रैप अप द लाइफ टूडे एंड आई री स्टार्ट द लाइफ टू टेक योर जेनेरिक क्वेश्चन जेनेरिक थॉट्स एंड टू हैव बिट ऑफ अ फन एंड मस्ती and i'll see if the live goes well we can take few of you live and you know interact with you one on one yes yes like every other live i'll save it i'm not in delhi ankit i am in hong kong presently so uh so i hope you guys uh, uh, you have enjoyed the live today and in case you have then do share the live leave your comments and do let me know which other rule would you like to me to cover on my next live wherever whenever i plan to do it most probably on sunday not saturday at least saturday i'm planning something else if it works out then in that case we keep it saturday all right okay fine we'll wrap up the live today can be pass ahead of a vessel in case of crossing situation avoid crossing ahead and which vessel are you talking about if two power driven vessel then you are supposed to comply with rule 15 if not well you can pass ahead of the vessel because it the crossing situation is a situation in which two power driven vessels are involved in a crossing situation but running ahead of a vessel ye aisi baat hai agar car chalti aa rahi hai train chalti aa rahi hai to aap avoid hi karenge so any vessel you must avoid but what if it's a fishing vessel with or a you know you know a, a fishing vessel with the 2 miles long net you will not try to you cannot practically alter 2 miles starboard and you if you have something on the port side Or maybe room on the port side. Then you can maneuver on the port side. But you should, uh, we should, you shall avoid passing out of the other vessel. It's never a good proposition. And unless the CPA is large enough that you can safely do that. But in a case of crossing situation, the risk of collision is existent. Then you shall avoid. So on those thoughts, we'll wrap up the live. Thanks a lot for joining, and I'll see you on the next live. Suppose if a tug and two. and we have some stuck between two pdv sorry sir rehan you need to explain the question a little bit in bit of more detail i didn't get your question at all suppose if it's a tug and two and we have some stuck between two pdv bhai kahan jaane ki koshish kar raha hai matlab question bana raha hai ya matlab cha raha hai ki background ho jaye usme matlab I didn't get your question honestly. If you can just provide me with a bit of more detail, I'll be able to answer it. Or at least I'll try to answer it. If you can just give me the full question again. I think that's it. What's the max speed of a ship? What is it maximum load capacity? Sorry, no generic questions as of now. Only call rex related questions. So I think that's it. We'll wrap up the live. Thanks a lot for the joining, and I'll see you on the next as soon as I started in one minute. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Sir, which rule from section one do not apply in RV? Boy, ये कैसा सवाल है? आप इसका जवाब खुद पूछिए क्या आपने मेरा पहले लाइव अगर देखे होते तो आपको इस, इसका आंसर बिल्कुल पता होता मैं आपको रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा इस चीज का जवाब आप मेरे बाकी के लाइव में जाके देखिए रीजन भी इस चीज का आंसर मैंने बहुत क्लियरली दिया हुआ है सेक्शन वन अप्लाइज इन एनी कंडीशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी सो देर इज नो रूल विच इज एग्जेप्टेड इन आरवी सेक्शन वन दैट मीन्स रूल नंबर फोर टिल रूल नंबर टेन दे आर एप्लीकेबल इन एवरी कंडीशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी एवरी गॉश डेम कंडीशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी दैट्स एप्लीकेबल ओके वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन रूल्स एंड रूल्स यार ये क्या लिख दिया आपने मुझे नहीं पता आप क्या पूछ रहे हैं भाई रूल्स एंड रूल्स के बीच में क्या डिफरेंस है चलो थैंक यू गाइज सी यू ऑन द नेक्स्ट बाय बाय